Long before the arrival of Europeans, the southeastern part of America was also populated by a large number of native tribes. Just as before, the journey for these people to this region of America had occurred over hundreds and hundreds of years. Extended family groups moved gradually from the northern regions to the southern. They were probably enticed by the warm sunshine that touched their skin, the fruit and berries they could gather, and the herds that they hunted. And so, settlement was a gradual process from a nomadic existence to a structured form of settlement based around small farming communities. Some of these southeastern native tribes included the Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Creek. Some of the Creek, together with other tribes, became merged many years later with a Native American group called the Seminole and migrated farther south into present-day Florida. These tribal groups lived in the densely forested Appalachian Mountains, on the flat and verdant coastal plains, and among the green rolling hills. The area referred to as the southeast stretches from the lower Mississippi River to the Atlantic Ocean and from Tennessee to the coastal areas near the Gulf of Mexico. It is an area that even to this day boasts a warm, pleasant climate and rich, fertile soil. Just like the Hopi and Zuni of the southwest and the Iroquois of the northeast, many of the southeastern tribes had ancestral ties to ancient cultures. For example, the people of the Natchez tribe were the direct descendants of the native people who created the extraordinary Mississippian culture. And just as before, once these large extended family groups formed tribes and developed ways to grow and harvest crops, they began to settle in specific areas. It's true to say that farming changed human history forever. Once people began to farm, they were compelled to stay close to their fields in which their crops grew. Therefore, as the crops in the fields grew, so did the cultural identity of large numbers of tribal groups. The landscape and climate contributed greatly to each tribe's identity. For the southeastern Indians, corn, beans, and squash, including pumpkins, were the most important crops. These crops were essential to the survival of the southeastern Indians. Sunflowers were grown for seeds and oil, and tobacco was harvested too. All tribes fished and hunted, especially during the winter months. They used bows and arrows to hunt animals such as deer, rabbits, raccoons, and turkeys. The children of the tribes gathered nuts, berries, and sap. Again, several kinds of corn were grown and cooked in a variety of ways. Corn could also be dried and used during the months when food was less plentiful. When Europeans first came to North America, the Southeast was the most densely populated region. The Southeastern Native American tribes benefited from rich soil, reliable rainfall, and warm sunshine for most of the year. And so, unlike the colder regions of America in the Southeast, it was possible to grow two main crops a year. With a more reliable food supply, the native population grew quite considerably. The first crop of the year was usually planted in late spring and harvested in the middle of summer. The second crop was planted midway through summer. At the end of each growing season, many tribes burned off any unused parts of the plant. This process enriched the soil for the next crop. The men of the tribe were responsible for turning the soil, or plowing, and the women and children tended the crops. Even though the southeastern tribes farmed, it was still important for them to obtain food by hunting, fishing, and gathering. In the wintertime, when frost or snow coated the landscape and nothing could grow in the sleeping earth, hunting parties would leave home and go in search of much-needed food. Southeastern tribes built a combination of small tribal villages near areas that were good for farming and were also close to a water source, such as a river or a lake. And they built larger town-like settlements with fences in similar locations. The smaller villages were generally close to the larger towns. Several hundred people could live in a tribal town. Each tribe protected its villages and towns as well as its farmland. In the center of a village was a large common area for holding meetings and ceremonies. Children could play in this area too. 
Children played games and they had toys. Several villages formed chiefdoms. There was a tribal chief who, together with important warriors and religious men, governed the tribe from a central town. The chiefs of these governing bodies held the greatest power of all the leaders and were destined to serve as chiefs from the moment they were born. The chief's house and a gathering place called the Great House were also in the center of the village. Like the common area, the Great House was used for special occasions. As did all native people in North America, the southeastern tribes used natural resources to build their homes. In this case, they generally used wood, cane, mud, and straw to build family homes. The styles of these houses did vary, but most southeastern native people built circular homes in the wintertime. Winter homes had cone-shaped roofs through which smoke from an internal fire could escape. Summertime houses varied considerably. Some were round, grass houses where others had large thatched roofs supported by wooden poles. Some summer houses had walls and others didn't. Most southeastern tribes wore similar clothing. Deer skin was scraped and pounded until it became soft to the touch. It was sewn together to make dresses, skirts, leggings, robes, and shoes. One of the largest tribes in the southeast was the Cherokee. They lived in Georgia, North and South Carolina, Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Like most tribes, they lived in villages on the edge of a river. Their villages were set up with careful planning and their homes were cleverly constructed. Cherokee homes were built by weaving river cane, wood, and vines together to make a framework. The framework was then coated with a mud-like plaster. The roof was either thatched or covered in bark. These homes were permanent homes and took quite some time to construct. The Cherokee are thought to be distant relatives of the Iroquois because of similarities in the languages they spoke. They would later become part of the Seminole Nation. In Cherokee society, the men were in charge of hunting, going to war, and making tribal decisions that were political. Cherokee women were responsible for making decisions about the family, the property, and farming. In the late summer, the Cherokee celebrated the end of the growing season with a kind of harvest festival called the Green Corn Festival. As well as feasting on corn, it was seen as a time to start afresh. New clothes were worn, grievances were settled, and people sang and danced. Like all native peoples, the Cherokee believed in natural spirits. They looked up at the night sky and believed there was a connection between the earth and the heavens. For them, the sun was the most important force of all. The Cherokee often went on hunting, fishing, and trading trips. They traveled along the long, winding rivers in canoes. When journeying across land, they used dogs as pack animals. The Cherokee made beautiful pots, beadwork, bags, and textile art. These items were often traded with other tribes for copper, shells, stone tools, pots, and ochre to make yellow-brown paint. From midsummer through late fall, on the outskirts of most Cherokee villages, a ball game called Anetza was played. The name of the game is a big clue to how important this ball game actually was. In fact, it was so important that it can hardly be compared to games as we think of them today. The word Anetza in the Cherokee language means little brother of war. The men who participated in Anetza would become prepared for fighting wars as they played. Anetza was played on a flat area of land that could be at least three acres in size. Goalposts made of saplings were placed at either end of the playing area. The ball used to play this game was made of deer hide and it was about the size of a golf ball. Each player had two short sticks made of hickory with which to hit the ball. There could be hundreds of players playing at one time. The first team to score 12 points won the game. Special rituals occurred with the guidance of shamans the evening before the game was played, and these rituals were as important as the game itself. Men and women would dance and chant around a fire all night long. One by one, the men would go to the water with the shamans, where they would receive special medicine to make them more confident and skilled. 
The rituals were believed to bring success to players, and they were also a way of encouraging the players to be brave, for this game had very few rules and was extremely violent. As a result, there were many injuries. Like many other Native American tribes, people of the Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, and Seminole still inhabit areas of the Southeast region of America. Some of these Native Americans identify with modern day culture, whereas others choose to live as their ancestors lived before them and honor traditions from long ago.